I'm going to jump straight into a setting you should probably have set up right now. In your Unreal Engine 5 project settings, search for allow static lighting and uncheck this box. That will now enable material ambient occlusion, which will allow us to go from this result to this. Much cleaner and improved shadowing in indirectly lit areas. You're welcome. If you've been using Lumen in Unreal Engine 5 for a while, you might have noticed that it is missing the ability to control ambient occlusion. And while we used to be able to control AO through the post-process volume in Unreal Engine 4, things are different now. Now, right before we jump into how and why this all works, and a bit of a shameless plug, this video is sponsored by me. In December, I released a new tool called EasyMapper on the Epic Marketplace, which is now 50% off for the next week. EasyMapper is a master material setup that supports world-aligned triplanar texture projection combined with nanite tessellation and displacement and advanced vertex blending, all in one elegant package for easy texture blending on all of your assets. I also just released an update for EasyMapper allowing custom grayscale maps and the ability to paint puddles. So if you've been on the fence, now is the time to get it because it is dirt cheap. You'll find the link down below. Okay, so let's dive into why Material AO is important. Ambient Occlusion, or AO for short, is a rendering technique used to simulate the soft shadows that occur in creases, cracks, and corners of objects where light is occluded by nearby geometry or models or whatever. Screen Space AO was a very popular feature in UE4, and a lot of people are wondering why it can't be used anymore with Lumen. In Unreal Engine 5, however, Lumen uses a technique called Global Illumination, or GI, for its lighting. GI is all about direct and indirect lighting in a scene, including effects like proper color bleeding and reflected lighting and shadows from multiple light bounces. Unlike ambient occlusion, global illumination does take into account the interactions of light with surfaces and materials. AO only takes the proximity of geo into account, not the lighting. So even if a surface is brightly lit, AO still shows up and looks a little fake and gamey. AO and GI are two totally different rendering approaches. So with Lumen, a screen space AO isn't really necessary anymore because GI takes care of the ambient shadows for us already. Having SSAO and GI would result in shadows that are way too dark, and it's just it just doesn't look very good. But Lumen isn't perfect. In order for Unreal to run in real time, shortcuts need to be made somewhere. And Lumen takes those shortcuts by sacrificing lighting quality, and more specifically, lighting accuracy. Because while Lumen does use ray tracing, it only calculates about half a ray per pixel, while path trace renders need about 200 plus rays per pixel for acceptably noise-free GI. So yeah, shortcuts need to be made somewhere. There's no free lunch. While Lumen does take care of the general shadowing between objects, in fact, it's really good as of Unreal Engine 5.3. I've got to give credit where credit is due. But it just isn't accurate enough to get those really satisfying high-frequency detail shadows that you get when you compare it with the path tracer. Take a look at this render I made in a video last year. The path trace results are simply better, especially once you know what to look for. Fortunately, that is where Material AO can come in very handy, which is the feature we just enabled by disabling that checkbox at the beginning of the video. Don't ask. So here I have this awesome suit of armor model. You'll see that the armor bits do get a bit of self-shadowing thanks to GI and Lumen. You get this for free. But some of those contact shadows still feel a little bit floaty. Like this part here, for example, right in between the two metal plates, it should be very dark. Not much light should be able to reach in there. If we compare to the path tracer, you'll see that the path trace results just feel more better -er. The pieces of armor feel more connected. Right here, again, if we zoom in to those thinner plates of metal, the contact shadows here are just so soft and accurate and crisp. It is all about those contact shadows. But using Material AO, we can partly make up for that lack of accuracy when using Lumen. So using an AO map for this model, by plugging the map into the ambient occlusion slot of the material, we can go from this to this. It is a huge difference, but the really cool thing is that if I rotate the light around, you'll notice that the AO we added fades away. It only shows up in indirectly lit areas 
of your model. It isn't just multiplying the AO on top of the base color, like that old school thing we used to do back in like 2008. This is great because you wouldn't want a dark AO shadow to show up when a big bright light is shining directly on it, right? It is another way for us to squeeze out a bit more detail in those indirectly lit areas that Lumen really can struggle with a bit. So see what happens if I toggle the AO map on and off? It is a day and night difference major improvement. Now I did add some additional cavity detail to the AO map just to accentuate the example, but you get the idea. Fortunately, every single Megascan surface you download from the Quixel Bridge comes with an ARD, ORD map, meaning the ambient occlusion map is here in the red channel. But unfortunately, the Megascan's models do not seem to have AO included, only the roughness and displacement, which kind of sucks, but don't worry, there is a way to bake AO on your models directly in Unreal. So first, you're going to need to enable the Modeling Tools plugin by going here to Plugins and search for Modeling. Make sure these are checked. Once you restart the engine, you'll find the Modeling Tools here, or you can use the shortcut. Then we can navigate to the Bake tab over here, select the model whose AO map you want to bake, and select ambient occlusion from the list. Set it so that the AO map is saved to the correct folder, choose your desired resolution, and there you go. You'll have your AO map baked and ready to plug into its material, easy mapper or otherwise. Unfortunately, Unreal seems to use the CPU to bake the AO maps, which makes it a lot slower than the GPU baking that other apps like Substance Painter and Designer use. But I mean, it's amazing to have this baking feature built directly into the engine, I didn't even know it existed until recently. So I hope you found this tip helpful. Thank you so much for watching everyone. And as always folks, happy rendering.